Okay, hello everybody. Welcome to our lecture today. In this lecture, I want to start the main topic of introduction, statistical geometry, or uh, actually uh, uh, stochastic geometry, or sometimes geometrical probability. Okay, actually, any study of geometry probability will cover some basic properties of geometrical objects such as a points, lines, planes, circles, spheres, and so and also some polytos and polyhedras. Maybe we need to talk about them also. Fundamental concepts such as the random points, random planes, random direction, and the ways and the mean by which probability measures can, can be assigned to such random geometrical objects. Okay. In fact, some preliminary results and basic results and such geometrical objects and probability measures on these objects in termin glade with the historical development of the subject matter will be presented in this course. For the, we'll deal with the distributional aspects of various types of random geometrical configura configuration. Some more relevant historical notes will also be appended at the end of each uh, part of all lectures and when discussing new topics. Okay. So far, so good, actually. In fact, in this part, we are going to talk about Buffon's clean type problem and the needle problem. In 1733, um, George Buffon was a young man trying to enter to the younger class of the academics, royals, death, sciences in Paris, and his application was supported by a paper Carl Memorie sur le Dieu de France uh, Cario. I, I, I hope my pronunciation was correct. Also, it was received very well. The Memorie could not publish since Buffon was not yet an academician. It did, however, enable him to gain admission to the academy early the following year as a junior member. Okay. Actually, uh, the memory was kept with his papers until the year 1777 when writing the essay the, uh, the arithmetic mora, morale, he included the old text in the new work. And uh, Buffon uh, proposes and solved, not always correctly actually, three problems formulated as mathematical games of chances. These are the clean tile problem the needle problem and the grid problem. The needle problem and the grid problem are dealing with the dropping a needle at random. And the clean tile problem is concerned with the dropping a circular coin. Let's discuss a bit about the key, the clean tile problem. Okay, let's do it together. And here you see the needed problem in the picture and the left hand side, the poor phone, the, uh, the old picture. And I think this is not the picture, it's the, it's the photo or uh, some image by uh, drawing, maybe some artist drawing this, this picture. Anyway, let's go the next, for the next part. Okay, let's a little bit talk about the clean tile problem and then we try to solve uh, some 
uh, examples and samples. Actually, in a room tiled or paired with equal tiles of any shape, a coin is thrown upward. One of the players bets that after its fall, the coin will rest clean. And that is, uh, that is uh, to say, uh, on one tile only. The second player bets that the coin will rest on two tiles. Uh, I mean, uh, on the uh, crack uh, that separates two tiles. It is required to access and the chances for each player. Buffon consider tiles shaped as squares, equilateral triangles, and hexagons, and so on, and computed the ratio between the diameter of the circular coin and the length of the side of the tile in order for the game to be fair, okay? Okay, to begin with, suppose the circular coin of diameter D, this again, this coin, mm -hmm. with diameter D, okay, is tossed on the fiddle tile with squares of the side L here, side of here, it should be equal to L. Okay. Each where L uh, where uh, L uh, uh, is bigger than, strictly bigger than Okay, so L is bigger than this. Okay, then by considering uh, the figure, you can see here, and uh, this distance here, it, it is equal to T B over two. Mm -hmm. We can see that the probability for the coin to be entirely within one of the tiles, I mean, it will not cross any of the sides of the squares, it's given ratio between the area of in the inner square and that of the of outer square, I mean. Mm -hmm. If we consider that all event is D here, P of A, for example, it should be, you need to find the area of big square, mm -hmm. big square, the area of big square. Mm -hmm area of uh -huh, big square uh -huh, and area of a small square. So, A big one is trivial, it would be equal to L square. And the small one, actually, it should be here, the length of here, it has a, let's, let's talk about here. And here it, we have also another D over two and uh, the length of the smaller square 
which is equal to L minus D. So, because we have two D, D over two, which is equal to D, and here, which is equal to L minus D. So that's why the area of a small square, it should be equal to L minus D square. So if we, we calculate, we have this form. We know that it doesn't need to write, we write D over L power So it follows that the probability of at least one cut, I mean cutting two or more squares is the complement probability of that. So it means we know that the probability based of A plus A complement should be equal to one. That's why probability of P A complement, I mean at least the coin cutting one of the sides of the squares, and it should be probability of a complement, it should be equal to one minus, one minus D over L square. So, and therefore, for the game to be fair, these two probabilities must be equal. So, we need to consider that. We need to consider that these two probabilities for the fair game equal. Okay, very good. Let's discuss about this situation. Okay, taking it as the odds for the first player against others. That means if we put together, I mean, from this guy, we have one minus D over L square, which is equal to one minus one minus d over l square. If we recalculate, it means we have this equation, quadratic equation, l square minus four times d times l plus two times d square, which is equal to zero. Actually, who's, it has a uh, true solution, but we need only to uh, accept that the positive solution because uh, the length of the, in geometry length, it impossible and uh, would be negative uh, number, would be a negative number. So that's why at the end, we have this solution, L, which is equal to two plus square root of two times D, and which is, uh, if we approximate two plus uh, square root of two, we have approximately, we can say that is three point four one four two D. Now let me I write it with another color. So right now we find some connection between L and D. for some, for this game. Mm -hmm. 
So approximately we have this relation. Let's go to discuss another kind of a killing tile problem. Okay. Another case considered by Buffon is when the tiles are equilateral triangles of side L each. Okay. As you can see in the picture. L, L, and L. The area of the triangle of the side L is you know the probability is that we have same procedure but the shape here it is different and um, so for the main probability um, a need to mm -hmm. Okay, mm, big area, big triangle, area of big triangle, and area is small triangle. So, uh, based on geometry, we know that the area of the triangle. Mm -hmm. So, based on some geometry facts, geometric facts, we know that. The length of here should be equal to L based on our assumptions. So the height of one uh, equilateral triangle also it must be a median. So here should be half L. And here we know that it is again iron. So we know that how much is it based on Pythagoras, uh, Pythagoras theorem? Uh, it should be equal to this guy. So the area of the triangle. It should be, we know that what is a eight and what is a base? Mm -hmm. Half times base times the eight. Times L. So finally, we get this number. Square root of three over four L square in the denominator. Okay, and let's find a small area, a small track. For the coin of diameter D uh, to be cleanly on uh, one triangle alone. Uh, the center of the coin must be within uh, the inner triangle, as so you can see in the figure. So, the diameter of this coin 
which is equal to D. And here, which is E half, and here it's which is equal to D half, and here which is equal to D half. So the area of linear triangle, which is equal to And let's calculate calculate the area of the small triangle. Okay. Mm -hmm. First of all, let's draw this guy to this guy. So here we can say that this angle should be equal to. Thirty degree, and here is perpendicular to here, and the size of here it should be equal to half t. So, if we also we have another perpendicular here, the same reasoning, and here it should be again half t. Okay, we have in right, uh, we have one rule in right triangles. Uh, the length of hypotenuse, it should be uh, the, uh, the sides of the tri right triangle, uh, front of the, uh, in right triangle, the, si the side of the, that sides fr uh, in front of, uh, 30 degree angles, it should be half of the hypotenuse. So that's why this length should be two times d over d. I mean, it should equal to t. Okay, so that's why uh, if we consider that here, continue, here also we have half. This part should be equal to half t. So the length of, uh, I, we want to make a relationship between uh, height of a small triangle, uh, I mean this part, h prime and uh, big H. I mean H. So actually we can say that H prime, it should be equal to uh, length of uh, big, uh, uh, actually big height, it should be equal to over 2L. And we need to minus this guy. We don't have this guy, also this guy. I mean, we need to minus D here and D half D here. So it means it's minus three over two D. So we can say that it more clean it should be like this so also uh, we know we know that uh, actually in the uh, equilateral triangles uh, height it should be equal to this guy so with the side of l so we can say that what is the reverse of that a it should be equal to this is general formula i want to remind you from elementary geometry so that's why if we substitute h and times this guy 
rename uh, uh, here if you put n and here n and as a triangle it should be equal to uh, l times h over 2. So if you substitute based on this formula we know that what is the h prime h prime h prime we know that what's the h prime and we know that what's the l prime also we know that what's the l also and here it should be l prime i mean so if we substitute based on l and d we have this formula uh-huh we can say that uh -huh. we can say that S it should be equal to one over two uh, L minus square root of D times uh, square root of three over two times L minus three over two times D. It should be equal to three over four times L minus square three of D times two. So let's substitute this guy, okay? So if we substitute this guy, we have this formula. We have this formula. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And here we substitute three over four L minus square root of three times D power two. Okay, and This is, uh, and this is the actually, hence the probability of no cut or the coin failing clean is A or if you say that here is A and here is big A, actually it would be A over A or this guy. So actually we can be more clean if you want to uh, without some stupid fractions. Uh, I need to cancel this guy. Uh -huh with this guy so actually we can rewrite that it should be equal to l minus square root of three times d power two over square uh, over a square of l with more precisely we can write l minus square root of three over L power two and more precisely one minus square root of three d over l power two. So let's rewrite this guy instead of that. Mm -hmm. And yeah, this formula one minus square root of d d over l power two. So, what is this? This is the probability of no cut. Mm -hmm. The probability of no cut or the coin failing, falling, sorry, clean, clean. It should be this now. Okay, right now we can claim that actually. 
They're looking at the odds uh, uh, for the first player. If the game is uh, to be fair, then these two uh, probability must be equal. So, I mean, if uh, I was saying briefly, if we say that here, uh, product of A it should be equal to A over A or something like that. Actually, the probability of A complement, it should be equal to one minus A over A. And this uh, two outcome, it should be equal together. I mean, we need to say that product of A should be equal to product of A complement. It means mm -hmm, one minus three D over L power two, it is equal to one minus one minus the square root of three D over L power two. So here it's like a quadratic equation. It has two solutions, but we need only one of uh, actually it doesn't relate to or needs. It means uh, one of them, it would be acceptable because the length if uh, it uh, will be impossible equal to negative numbers and a, a, a negative number. So that's why if we, if we calculate this formula, we have L, L power two minus four, uh, three square square root of three times d times l uh, plus six times d two, which is equal to zero. And uh, as I told you, one of them is acceptable. So, so if we we saw that we have we have in this situation, okay. So L, which is equal to square root of six times the square root of two plus one, it's only solving some algebraic equation times D. Then if we approximate some irrational numbers can say that it should be equal to 5.9, 1359D. So it means if the length of L and the length of diameter uh, of the coin they have this relationship together. I mean, mm -hmm. I can say, mm -hmm. let's write right here. If they have this uh, relationship between together, for example, with less approximately have 5.9D, then the gain, it should be a fair gain. Okay, so that's it. It's very nice. Uh, actually, it was a very nice uh, problem. And let's go to generalize that more. And we talk about the first case considered by Buffon. Okay. Okay, the first uh, case considered there by Buffon was a uh, arumbos with the acute angle uh, pi over three and in the ob obtuse angle is two pi over three. Let uh, the acute angle be two times theta. Uh, actually it's shown by in the picture. And let the side of the arumbos be L each. For the coin to fall clean, the center of the coin must be within the inner diamond. You can see in the picture and figure. The area of the arumbos with side L 
actually we know that based on elementary geometry in high school we know that which is equal to uh, 2 l2 uh, sine of the theta cosine of the theta so and the inner uh, arm boost has side uh, I mean this guy the length of this guy it should be equal to L minus D over two times one over sine of theta times cosine of theta. So the area of that it should be equal to two times L minus D over two one over sine of the theta cosine of the theta i mean here we instruct the students of l this guy and power two and by similarity the angle it should be the same that's why here it should be sine of the theta cosine of the theta so we can say that uh, probability of this event here probability of event e uh, actually which is equal to here in the numerator we have an uh, area of uh, a, a small rm balls i mean a and denominator area of, sorry is equal to small a and the big uh, big one which is equal to a and let's substitute that this stuff a uh, let's substitute so if we cancel these guys and this guy we have Mm -hmm. L minus D over 2, 1 over sine of theta, cosine of theta, mm -hmm. power over 2, and here I cancel sine of the theta and cosine of the theta, and here L power 2. So if we cancel some parameter here, and we can say that, mm -hmm, for example, which is equal to L over L minus D over D, one over sine of theta, cosine of theta, power two. And if we cancel them, we can rewrite that in this clean shape. It would be more crystal clear. One minus d over two, one over sine of theta, cosine of theta, over two. Okay. Also, if we finish the, this guy, uh, I can write that half of the sine of 2 theta. So if you cancel that, it would be d over sine of 2 theta. So this probability, it should be equal to 1 minus d over sine of 2 theta mm -hmm. uh -huh. also we have one l here also and one l here also 
All right. So let's throw this guy and I move this guy to here. Very good. So the, uh, thus, and the probability of no cut is a over a, a small a over a, and the probability of at least one cut, it should be equal to, I mean, the probability of e complement, it should be equal to one over a over a, I mean, one minus this guy, one minus d over l of sine of the two theta square. So, if then for the game to be fair, looking at the odds for the first player, player, these two must be equal. So it means this guy and this guy should be equal. So I mean, again, let me remind you for the fair game, we need to one minus a big a small a over a big a should be equal to this guy. So let's a little bit discuss about this equation. That's why we can say that if P of E it is equal to P E complement, then we can say that L square minus two times L times D over sine of, mm -hmm. Actually, sine of two theta, and here we need to put uh -huh, four here. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Sine of the uh -huh, uh, sine of the theta, cosine of theta. We can try it instead of one over sine of the two theta and four here. And plus d over two, d two over two times one over sine of square of theta cosine of square of theta, which is equal to theta. Okay. Uh, who's uh, admissible solution? One of the solution, it is like solving one quadratic equation and one of them it should be acceptable because here like, for example, uh, this guy's should be coefficient of L in quadratic equation, this guy. And here is fixed coefficient and here L square, something like that. And when we solve that one of the solution, it would be acceptable because we want to talk about the length. And this is a geometric concept. Then we can say that, which is L, which is equal to one over sine of theta, cosine of theta times one plus one over square root of two times D, which is mm -hmm. four. Right now we need to, we know that in the beginning, I say that theta, which is equal to pi over six, if we substitute, mm -hmm. let me, first of all, just a moment. Then L, which is equal to mm, two over, square root of three times two plus the square root of two times d and theta which is equal to pi over six. If we substitute that actually in this for formula, uh, then approximately we can say that L which is equal to 3.94 94, 23 D. So if these two parameters 
have this relationship together in atom balls, we can say that we can say that this game is with this rule, it should be it it would be a fair game. Okay, so that's it. Let's talk about the other cases. Another case considered that considered by Buffon is a tile shape, a hexagon of the side L, and uh, the circular coin of diameter D for the coin to fall clean. The center of the coin must be within the inner hexagon as shown in the picture. So let's define the parameter in the shape, for example, here, it should be equal to D, and here it should be half D, and the length of the side of hexagon should be equal to L. Actually, we can say that the area of the hexagon of the side L, which is equal to, we know that from the element geometry, A, it should be equal to uh, three, or based on the area of the equilateral triangles, because it has the six equilateral tri triangles, three over two, the square root of L2, and the area of a small triangle, a small hexagon, can say that which A, which is equal to uh -huh, six over three, the square root of three, times the square root of three over two times L D over two um, power two. So we can say that if let's try it again, same procedure, right? I think everything's a little bit more clean for you. Root of E, which is equal to A over A, which is equal to Mm -hmm. Let's write mm -hmm. uh, 6 over 3, square root of 3, square root of 3 over 2 times, uh -huh, sorry, I think let's I start from here. Okay. Right now we can say that A and A and anyway. Six over the square root of three times square root of three over two mm -hmm. times L minus D over two square, it's a square. And in the denominator, Three over two square root of three. Uh huh. L power two. So that's it. And uh, we can say how we can cancel or not. It doesn't matter. Okay. So. One square root of three comes in the down, and we can rewrite that in this process like this. Here we have three, three, three times three, and two goes to the up twelve. Uh -huh. And you can cancel three by three, four, four over three. Uh -huh. Here we have four over three, four over three, and times actually three over two minus d over two l square. So that's it. And then this is the probability of no cut actually which is we can say that again it's a over a 
and the pr proceeding as a before for the fair game, we can say that um, free times L square minus four times square root of free DL plus two D square, which is equal to zero. And which gives admission and solu solution. I mean, one of the solution would be acceptable because one of them is negative, one of them is positive. So we can say that which is L equal to square root of six over three times one plus square root of two times D, which is approximately equal to 1.9. 71, 1970. So it means, or with less accuracy, and say that when L is approximately like this guy, can say that again, it should be a fair. So actually Buffon also look into the odds for each of the other players and they uh, examine the relationship between L and D for the game to be fair. In the certain way, this clean tile problem of Buffon represents the first attempt toward computing probabilities by using geometry instead of analysis. It's interesting, actually, but this is not the whole story. Buffon goes even further and inquires about a more challenging question. The famous needle problem. Further, we will discuss about this problem and such bunch of the problems. Okay, let's do it together. 